Hey, how's it going? Good and sexy people. Brad the Guitar just here. I'm going to do just a very quick rough and tumble follow up on this Guild Master Amp 66J and just a follow up to a much, much longer video. Uh, if you have not seen that yet, I will put a link up here. You can go check that out and then come back to this and this one will make a lot more sense in the end. Um, but I wanted to give an update on this. Um, the customer asked me to sign it, so that's why that's there. Normally I wouldn't do that on a vintage amp, but here's an interesting thing that I found out. So um, the cap can that was down here and uh, like I said, if you go watch that other video, you'll see what I mean. This is the cap can that was in it. It's covered in tape right now because I was trying to suppress some physical vibration that was going on with this cap can. And the can is a new CE distribution uh, made can. So it's a reproduction of you know the old style can capacitors on the same equipment um, that the old stuff was made on. And there's really no reason that this should be bad given how new it is, um, but apparently it is, and it's it's not bad in a electronic sense, I don't believe, but it's bad in a physical sense. There's something something going on inside of it that is causing uh, a physical rattle to kind of manifest and and just kind of get worse, and then it uh, propagates itself into the rest of the signal chain somehow and that's that's what was going on so that I had to break this out I had to make a couple of um, terminal strips I installed a couple terminal strips one on this side uh, and one over on this side and installed uh, four uh, capacitors discrete capacitors um, all of this stuff on the top is silicone I put this on here so that um, you won't get any rattles at all so this stuff will be in here solidly so I rebuilt the power supply and this thing is quiet now it's, it's really nice and quiet and one of the things I found an interesting thing and I did not this is the first time I had tried this I think um, but the virtual center tap <clears throat> that was on the uh, filament windings. Originally it was over here on one of the output tubes but it was going to ground so the center of it was just going to a grounding point over here on this transformer. Well I moved it over to the light and put it and put the grounding over here with everything else. I've broken the grounding out. Here's the main ground, here's where the caps are ground grounded right over here at this point uh, the bias for the output is grounded over here and everything else is on a um, is on a ground bus. I had to do a lot of changes to the grounding scheme to get this thing quieted down to accommodate the additional gain stage but I was able to do that um, I think very satisfactorily. Now it is uh, really nice and quiet uh, for what it is. I mean it, this is about as quiet as it's going to get but a couple things I wanted to point out again the virtual center tap that again I have over here I have put it on the phase inverter tube this is the phase inverter so we've got two stages of preamp then we have a phase inverter here and both of those are um, taken up in the phase inverter both halves and then this is this whole tube is tremolo so what I've done in this amp um, and I did some experiments too I um, and I'm not going to show those experiments but um, I'll tell you about them so I tried grounding the center tap in various places. I tried grounding it, elevating the heaters, um, they call it, to the cathode of the output. So I, I elevated it. And what that means is basically putting the, uh, the center tap of the filaments at, or the in this case a virtual center tap of the filaments um, at the uh, cathode of the output tubes and that raises it uh, the DC potential um, to a different DC potential basically getting the filaments off of the same DC potential as everything else so that it doesn't induce noise that's the theory and it does work it does it does uh, uh, work to do that it reduces noise but in this case I tried something different I moved it down here to the phase inverter and grounded it to uh, well, in this case, you can see it's going right here to pin eight. The this the and then pin eight is also connected over to uh, the other cathode. 
So I've got that center tap going to the cathodes of the phase inverter, and that is well above um, uh, ground. That's like 40 volts off in, instead of, I don't know what the, what the output is. It's, the cathode on the output is something like a f just a few volts, maybe 10, but this is more like 30 to 40. So uh, putting it here had a massive effect on the noise. It, it actually suppressed the noise quite a lot, and m even more so than uh, tying it to the output. Um, cathodes. So that's uh, one thing I wanted to mention because that's something that I might try to carry forward with me because I'd never tried that before and uh, I think I saw that mentioned in a forum or something a while back and I've always kind of wanted to test it out and see if it worked and it just occurred to me that I, that I had the opportunity here to do that and it does work. It did work in this case. I'm not going to say it work, it'll work in all cases but it did in this case. Um, the other thing that I found out about this amp, this power transformer is a Todd Electric. And Todd Electric appears to still be in business, and I think they're in New York. Uh, if it's the same company, now it might not be the same company, but it, how, you know, what are the odds of another Todd Electric making transformers, you know, in 2021? Probably minimal. So I would say this is probably the same company. Um, this transformer is a PT65. What I found is that transformer does not have enough voltage to get this amp to a point where the output tubes will put out their fullest potential. I did some uh, measurements with the oscilloscope. So I put a one kilohertz sine wave into the amp and measured with the oscilloscope and did the calculations to try to find the RMS uh, output wattage and the output wattage for this thing when I measured it initially was something like three volts or I mean excuse me uh, uh, three watts or something it was under five watts <laughs> I was like that is that right that can't be right under five watts for an amp like this is that's crazy right um, and then I measured the I, I did some measurements and and tried to bias these output tubes and I noticed hey, this thing is never going to bias uh, to the point where these output tubes can get up to, you know, 10 watts each or something like that for the plate dissipation. It just can't happen. So I came in here and I tried to rebias it. I tried to change that 210 ohm resistor and do some other things. Um, and got that resistor all the way down to zero. So I basically connected the tubes directly to the chassis. And at that, even then, the tubes would not um, bias up to their full potential for plate dissipation. So it's uh, this amp just does not have a strong enough power transformer to really um, get the most out of a pair of 6V6s, which to me is interesting. So they designed this thing deliberately under spec so that it would remain a bedroom loudness kind of an amp and very clean. Um, so you can't really overdrive the tubes necessarily, like um, you know, like you might in you know some other amps, uh, and push really push the output. So I, I just thought that was interesting, and and it, and also what was interesting to me is it reminded me of a video I saw uh, of that Uncle Doug put up the other day. I'll put a link up here if you want to go check out his video. I um, encourage you to do so. I think it was a Harvard amp that he was working on, and uh, the same thing was true in that amp. So that power transformer was under spec for the uh, for the tubes that it was supposed to be operating. So that's just interesting to me. So that's the first time I've encountered that, and it's. Uh, it's interesting coming on the heels of the, you know, obviously it, it seemed like the first time Uncle Doug had encountered that as well in one of his videos. So um, that might be something to look out for, you know, if you're if you're messing with one of these more obscure amps um, that's not as well documented, and you come across that that the, you know, there's just not enough voltage to really push the output tubes. Um, you know, you just got to basically do your best because what ended up happening when I tried to lower this value. Uh, so, you know, I tried 100 ohms, 30 ohms, 0 ohms, you know, to the ch directly to the chassis. 
and it did get the plate dissipation per tube up around, I was able to get it um, by going direct to chassis about 9 watts per tube, which is close to what they're capable of, but still not all the way. But the problem with doing that was I found, well, first of all, if you go to zero ohms, you have no res um, bias resistor. You can't put a bypass capacitor in and raise the, um, the base on the output. Um, the other problem is when, when doing that, the tremolo would no longer operate because the tremolo operates by varying, um, varying the bias. So it's, if it can't do that, then it won't work at all. So that was the other problem I ran into. And this is the ideal. I mean, for the tremolo to work and for the tubes to also you know, op function and operate for the amp to function fully, um, that was about the, the optimum value that I found. But it's funny that they chose that value based on this underperforming transformer. So anyway, that, those are some notes that I thought I would throw in with this thing before I sent it back. I may do another little jam here in a second uh, with this thing just because it's fun as hell. And because I think it turned out really, really well for what it is. And it is, you know, it is loud. Um, surprisingly loud for what it is too. I mean, given the fact that you can't really drive the output and it's, these are really underperforming 6v6s in this configuration. Um, it's still surprisingly loud. So I might do another little video here, but I just thought that was interesting.
Thank <laughs> you.